This is Tabmok99, and I'm here with Mike from the Mortal Kombat Encyclopedia. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Mike. So Hi. good to be here with you. Yeah, you too, man. Um, before we get into the project, I would just like to know a little bit more about you, and uh, what was your first involvement with Mortal Kombat? Uh, I've been a Mortal Kombat fan since 92. Uh, my father brought it home. Um, we had been playing like Super Mario on the Nintendo, on the Super Nintendo. He always bring home new games, and uh, you know he brought home the first Mortal Kombat it was Sega, on the Sega Genesis. He brought home that one. The one with the sweat, where you don't actually get to see the blood and stuff like that. Um, but it kind of grew from there. You know, I'd, I'd hear rumors like around grade school about people. Like one of my friends told me, he's like, yeah, there's a green ninja and all this other stuff. It was one of the coolest things that I've ever, you know, heard. And, and uh, it kind of took off from there. Um, a lot of it kind of stemmed from, uh, you know, my friends and, and the Mortal Kombat's culture around that time. So, uh, you know, and it kind of took off from there for me. And I became, you know, a pretty rabid fan about it. In terms of collecting and, and trying to build everything and uh, with the lore and whatnot, it's one of the only fighting games that has like a really cool and immersive story mode, like conquest mode and stuff like that. Uh, you know, they really do spend a lot of time putting in you know little details and stuff for for, for, for people, you know, versus like Street Fighter where it's like a little blur. Um, and uh, you know, I've, I've been an epic fan, like uh, all about Mortal Kombat. I'm actually playing a Mortal Kombat sleeve that I'm going to work on. But yeah, I mean, this has been this has been my heart and soul for the last like two years. I'm with you 100. percent Mortal yeah. Kombat has a great atmosphere, uh, full of secrets, full of interesting mythology. Leads to a lot of rumors. Mortal Kombat was great, especially in the early arcade days. Um, what was your involvement with Mortal Kombat Online? Um, I've been a member of Mortal Kombat Online since when it was called MortalMK5.org, um, and I've been a member on there. Uh, my username is Ninja Arts. Um, I've, I've helped, uh, you know, post about things, you know, when things like pop online or I'll post like submit news feeds and stuff like that. Um, but I'm an active poster on there. You see that my, my rank is warrior right now. Um, uh, but I'm pretty proud of it. MKO has helped us out a lot. They've done news feed, news posts for us. Um, we've posted on the forums. We actually have a guy that posts on there, the two cool master. Um, he is, uh, he designs a couple pages for us as well. Um, but a lot of people have pitched in and, and really helped us out with this project, and it's it's really been uh, MKO has been kind of our hub. So, how did you first get the idea to do this project, the Mortal Kombat Encyclopedia? Um, so, there's there's not really a lot of uh, like books that kind of tell you about Mortal Kombat. You know what I mean? Like, there's um, there's books like that for Street Fighter. There's books like that for Darkstalkers. There's books like that for games like that are obscure, like Blaze Blue and and uh, King of Fighters and Tekken, like even Tekken, um, and even Soul Calibur. I mean, there's books like that for that, mostly because of like Asian fan base and stuff like that. Um, those books come out overseas and then they kind of come over here. Uh, but Mortal Kombat doesn't really have a reference like that. And then there's the other thing too is that you know there's only ever been one Mortal Kombat art book, and that was the one that came with the, the collector's edition uh, for MK9. Um, but this would combine those two things. You know what I mean? And it got to me, and, and I was like, you know, there isn't really anything, you know, MKX marks, you know, almost 25 years of, of Mortal Kombat, and there's nothing for this franchise. Why? You know, there's nothing for it. Um, so I reached out to Sean Kittleson, who was writing the Mortal Kombat X comic books, and they kind of gave him the keys to the car in terms of, you know, driving the story that was between Mortal Kombat 9 and MKX. Um he was like, yeah, man, this is an awesome idea. You know, uh, he, he helped out with, I know he, he helped out with DK books. He worked there previously. Um, and he worked on Injustice, which he's doing right now with Injustice 2. Um, and he was all about the idea. He was one of our biggest proponents and he, he helped, you know, share our petition and, and he actually talked about it on interviews, on video interviews and stuff like that. So I got the go ahead from him in terms of, you know, can I use your name? Can I use, yes, this is, this is an idea for, you know, what we can do. And he was like, yeah, go for it. So, you know, I started putting together the petition. And at that time, petitions were kind of running rampant. Like, you know, the Tremor one was the number one one. And put Rain in Mortal Kombat X and put Jade in Mortal Kombat X. Hey, it works. Yeah, well, the Tremor one worked. Um, I don't think the other ones really worked. Um, but this is a different one because it doesn't actually involve them, you know, using their man hours to do that. All it does is really say, okay, well, here, here's a publishing company. Um, you know, let's give them the resources and then. That's it. You know what I mean? And you put this book out, and this is easily like a fifty nine ninety nine book, and it's going to sit on every Mortal Kombat fan's table. And let alone, you know, it's also going to sit on every developer's desk too, because 
how many times do you think they sit around and they're like, man, what was Rain's name again? Or like, did Rain have a name? Like, you know, really obscure stuff, um, you know, that they kind of might retcon or they might, might have to, you know, go back and ask questions about it. Is Reptile a raptor or is he as a Terran? You know, um, a lot of that stuff can be defined by a book like this, you know, and fans have questions and you could see, you know, on Twitter, it's one of the biggest ones where people are grilling people like Brian Shard, who no longer works with Matter Realm Studios. Hey, you know, what's what's going on with this character? You know, what's the backstory on this character? And it's it's the biggest thing that you could have as a Mortal Kombat fan, and it would answer all of your questions. And you have to take into account you have thousands of new fans that are entering the franchise. Like, even if it's just for esports alone, do do you think they know that like Sub Zero once had the shredder look for MK Deception? You know, it was one of the coolest looks he had, but you know, they probably don't know that. They sit down and play this game, and they're like, oh, Sub Zero's really cool. But they, they don't know, like, the backstory of Sub Zero, like, the old timeline, or, like, the new timeline, what separates them. You know what I mean? And there's so, all kinds of obscure story elements that you can't expect the developers to all know, because they're not just trying to write a story. They're trying to make a game here. Yeah. There's a lot more for them to consider. No, absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things. And, like, there's so many obscure things, like, from, if you if you even look at, like, Mortal Kombat Armageddon's Conquest mode, like, you know, the, the Tengu and, and the Takunin and the Brothers of the Shadow and all that other stuff, you know, it, it, it really does get kind of tied up and, and people get confused and it's kind of like there's no real clarity. So a book like this would kind of solve those issues and, and kind of help guide people and help them be more understanding of, of what's going on in this universe. And also it'd be a really cool art book too. Absolutely. So you must have been working on this for quite some time now. Uh, about a year and a half. Yeah, um, I started the petition, I started the Twitter, um, I was incessantly reaching out to people, um, it was, it was almost annoying, like, I would just, like, tweet after every post and, like, try to reach out to every single fan of Ed Boons, like, I would just go through his, like, I would have a piece of paper and I'd write down the Twitter handles, but everyone that followed Ed Boon and I would, like, tweet them out, um, with a link to the petition and say, hey, check this out, you know, this is what we're trying to do, um, and then, uh, we just recently, uh, in the last year, um, a lot of phone calls to England and London, uh, trying to reach uh, Dorling Kindersley. Um, they very much want to do the book. Um, they said that many times, but Warner Brothers is kind of like, eh, well, we're not sure. Um, a lot of phone calls to Warner Brothers, um, and a lot of phone calls to Prima Games, uh, various publishers we've reached out to, too, as like Inside Editions. Um, there's a couple other ones that are not as big. Um, but we did have one time where Rigo Cortez basically said if they wanted to do a book, a publisher would have to come to us. Well, we took the liberty of saying um, when we spoke to those publishers, we, we basically did all the legwork. Um, we set everything up. We've sent everything to those publishers. Like uh, yesterday, we just heard back from Prima. They got their copy of the prototype. Um, Warner Brother, I'm supposed to hear back from this week um, regarding their prototype that we shipped to them. Um, but we have we have prototypes out there, five or six of them, um, and then we're going to have five more coming up. But, I mean, we've taken it to the point where we actually have physical copies, and, and you know, it's a lot different than pictures. You know, you can actually hold it in your hands, and, and it's something that, man, I wish this could be real. You know what I mean? Definitely. I mean, there were people on Mortal Kombat Online's discussion board who were thinking, yeah, I don't know about this whole MK Encyclopedia thing. Mm -hmm. Until they actually saw some of the previews and some of the pages of the prototypes that you have to offer. Mm -hmm. Now they want to own one. Yeah, it's completely different when you see it. And the, the, the other copies that we have, we're going to be sending out to YouTubers. Um, basically to say, uh, you know, this is an incredibly rare item, like a Mortal Kombat item. Um, uh, and, and there's only a very limited copy. You know, everyone's always trying to be like the biggest MK collector, but these items are very rare because we're only making so many of because they're very expensive to make. Um, and it's going to be something that they're going to show off on YouTube and we're going to personalize each, each and every one. So like the first page is actually going to say the Twitter handle to whoever we're sending to. So, wow. yeah, <laughs> we're pretty pumped about it. Yeah. So people better not be giving those copies away. Well, yeah, we, we put a, a thick page in the front that they're not to be resold. Um, they're not worth anything. They're, you know, they're made for that person. I was wondering how you were going to uh, tap Warner Brothers and get them interested in this project because they've done, you were talking about earlier, 
about other video game encyclopedias, and specifically fighting game encyclopedias. And Warner Brothers, who owns DC Comics, mm -hmm. um, they've published Batman encyclopedias and Superman encyclopedias and things like that. Um, do you think it's do you think it's harder for them to get kind of buy in on the whole Mortal Kombat encyclopedia thing? I think it's a newer property for them, so it's kind of they're kind of touch and go about it. Um, I've had various conversations with them, uh, multiple different people, um, uh, the licensing director over there, and I've also spoken to. Uh, a lot of the global publishing folks. Um, but the majority of it is, you know, uh, the last time we spoke to uh, Josh Anderson, who's who's over there at Global Publishing, he said that it wasn't even on the radar prior to me calling. And he's like, you know, you guys have done a lot of legwork and we're kind of impressed by it because, um, you know, it's not every day that a fan reaches out to a high-level executive and kind of pitches an idea that's something that's on their radar now. Uh, and the fact that we, we actually had a publisher go to them um, was something they had never seen either. Um, but it's on their radar now. They said that they're not closing the door on it. And they said that um, that they'll be, touch, they'll be in touch with us whenever you know uh, they can. Uh, but as of right now, all they have is, is images and, and kind of an idea. And Prima Games is pushing pretty heavily for it. Um, but now that we sent them a prototype, I'm hoping that they get it and they open it up and they're like, wow, maybe this could really be a thing. Um, so that's what we're hoping for. Uh, and, and, and that's what we're kind of trying to stir for. You know, an official book that, you know, that if they make it, you know, it's something that every Mortal Kombat fan can Even fighting game fans, like regular fighting game fans, or, you know, people that just collect art books. You know, there's so many markets you could tap there. And the petition's only, it's almost like 6,000, um, but that's only so many people. And there's only two of us that are pushing it. So I mean, if you if you had Ed Boon tweet that link out and say what's a Combatpedia, could you imagine the number of signatures it would probably have? Like it's it's phenomenal. Yeah, the lapse was so exciting about social media. I mean, the way you're going about this whole thing mm -hmm. couldn't have been done 10, 20 years ago. No, and <laughs> I probably wouldn't have needed one 10, 20 years ago because uh, the way the Mortal Kombat story was, it wasn't as convoluted and, and, and twisted up and tied, and there's not two alternate storylines. Uh, there's not all these relations that were, were happening, you know, so-and-so killed so-and-so. Uh, but now it's like you kind of need that because a lot of people are into the games and they play the games and it's kind of like, I don't really know the backstory. You know what I mean? There's like a, a, a short Raiden flashback, but it's like, but what really happened? You know what I mean? And there's old school fans who maybe don't know the new story too well, just like you've got a new generation of people coming into it who may not be familiar with the old story. Yeah, Absolutely. And that's, that's one of the major things. And like when people play Reptile, like this is one of the other things. I, I One of my friends, I just got him into Mortal Kombat. It wasn't too long ago. And I, I told him, he's like, yeah, I'm really good with Reptile. And I was like, well, what do you know about him? And I was like, do you know that he used to actually have a skull head and he used to just copy Scorpion and Sub-Zero's moves when you fought him and he was like super tough? Um, and then I was like, no. And, I, and then like I actually had some some backup because he, he had seen that Reptile statue, the new one. Um, Ken comes with a skull head. He was like, why does he have a skull head? kind of explained it to him. He was like, wow, I never would have known that. Uh, but it's like little things. And then, uh, you know, we, we try and tell people, and we, we were trying to really pitch the idea for this book that it has like little known facts, like little Easter eggs and stuff like that. Like in, in MK3, did you know Noob Sidot wasn't actually a ninja? It's just a cool hack you know? Um, so, I mean, it's really cool. And, and a lot of these younger fans, a lot of the supporters for the Combatpedia right now are younger fans and they're reaching out to us and they're like, well, how can I get a copy of the prototype? They're 17, 18, 19 years old. It's just like, it blows my mind because this this game transcends like generations. And it's really, really cool to kind of tie everything together. Yeah, this is an amazing story going on behind the Mortal Kombat encyclopedia. Um, some, of, some of that I've noticed in the prototype, you've got some really high quality assets mm -hmm. going on. How did you get a hold of some of those? Uh, <laughs> so the, the graphic designer, Anthony, that I'm working with, he's awesome. Um, he's been really, really passionate about the project as well. And then we're also working with a guy, like I said, from MKO, uh, Tommy, uh, the two cool dude, 757. Um, a lot of those guys, they, they really went above and beyond in terms of looking for, you know, the best quality images and, and kind of laying them out in a way that was really, really cool to, uh, like a Mortal Kombat fan. Um, I think Tommy's are more, uh, encyclopedia format which is really cool because then it has like the, the history of the character the bottom. Anthony's are going to be more splash and, and kind of really really uh, you know I want to say pretty <laughs> uh, 
but he's he's gotten a hold of. I guess he ripped all the the renders and stuff from the Mortal Kombat X game, and then we kind of moved him and tweaked him a little bit. Um, so he kind of he kind of got some renders that you know you won't be able to find. Anymore. Like we have that image of Goro holding the, the MK Dragon logo. Right. Um, you won't find that. Online. Right. What's interesting about that particular picture? I was thinking about it. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a standee. Um, the original Mortal Kombat 1 came out of a John Tobias drawing of Goro holding the Mortal Kombat logo I remember that. sign. Yeah. I remember he tweeted something out about that. It was, it was a while ago. But yeah, and Richard DiVigio, actually, there's a picture of him posing right next to that standee as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I know, I know we have him in there too. Um, we tried to get all the actors in there, like the original guys. We got Richard DiVigio and, and we got John Vogel and we got, uh, you know, Dan Ford, and we got all those guys, like the originals are all up there. Ed Boone, John Tobias. Um, we've been trying to reach out to John for quite some time, but he hasn't gotten back to us yet. Yeah, he can be, he can be hard to get a hold of. He's kind of reclusive. <laughs> so have you, so you're really trying to reach out. I mean, obviously you don't have to reach out to the old guys to know. put them in the book, but you've really been trying to reach out to everybody. Yeah. I mean, some of them must be really hard to get a hold of. Like, Katalin Zanyar, Elizabeth Malecki. Have you been able to, to track down some of these guys? Uh, we're taking it one person at a time. Um, uh, right now, the focus is on is on John. Uh, I know we're doing a page on Sean Kittleson. Um, it's going to be focused like on the comic books, and then we're going to maybe try and throw something in from like the Malibu days. Um, sweet, yeah. Maybe throw some hydro in there. <laughs> uh, but it's 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 we're focusing like one person at a time right now. Maybe some Abacus and Zagat. Yeah. Or some, uh, what were the two brothers, the two twins? I forget their names. Oh, yeah, Sing and Sang. They could merge into one person and call themselves, or call themselves Seeing. There's there's a lot that we're trying to do to kind of appeal to people and, and make people say, like, well, what is that? You know, um, I know we're doing some pretty obscure character pages right now. I think Tremor's in the works. Um, and Anthony and I were talking about it, and I, and I said, you know, maybe we should do the original storyline that was for Tremor, you know, that he was like a Lin Kuei double agent type thing. And then he went to the Black Dragon and uh, that's why he was a ninja. And then maybe kind of show like the old, you, you've seen the concept art of him, right? Like that sketch that just looks like a basic bigger ninja yeah. uh, with, the, with the MK3, the square um, pattern. But, you know, there's going to be more stuff that we're kind of throwing out there that's not as heavy fan favorites. Like we have Katana, we have Scorpion, we have Sub Zero, you know, let's let's try and start making some other ones. Um Chameleon was an idea. You know, we could just put Chameleon on one page and then kind of have Chameleon with the K on the other page and just kind of like parallel it. Um, but there's a lot we're trying to do but uh in terms of reaching out to the, the actors and the folks that worked on the games, it's kinda of tough because some of them are really busy and they're really hard to get a hold of. Um but we've we've been fortunate because Daniel's been helping us out, and he's kind of reached out you know, and retweeted all of our stuff, and you know, kind of gathered some of folks. Like Carrie Haskins uh, has helped us out. Um, she retweeted our stuff. She loved the page that we did for her. Uh, even John Vogel liked the page that we did for him because it has his little skitter thing on the bottom. It's really cool. Um, so, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make as many pages for these guys as possible to kind of you know spread that love for the MK community. So that kind of leads into my next question. Um, you're not just covering the Mortal Kombat games in this combat, uh, combat PDA. You're covering comic books. You're covering the movies. You're mm-hmm. covering TV shows. You're going to try and cover all the media yeah. and merchandise and things like that. Absolutely. Um, you've been talking to me about some of the action figures that are coming out. So are you going to have a maybe a section that covers all the different action figure lines from over the years? We're going to do what we can with that. Um, it's It's a little more... Well, we want, to fa- we want to focus on the games and the people behind the games right now. Right. For what we're pitching for our for our initial prototype and our pitch. Um, what That's what this initially is, because it's a sales pitch. Um, we're trying to sell it to the fans. We're trying to sell the idea to Warner Brothers. We're trying to sell the idea to Prima and DK Books. You know, anybody that wants to basically pick it up. And they pick it up, and it's going to be an official book. Um, and I've had in-depth conversation with Prima, and they... They want the book to happen, and they want it. They said it will by no means be a small book. Uh, because I, I told him, he was like, yeah, do you remember that Mortal Kombat trading card game? You know, the one where you would, you would have, like, a, you know, it would be like a battle card game with Pokemon almost. He's like, yeah, we have, like, decks of those sitting around the office. So I was like, wow, I need to get a hold of those. I haven't had those since I was a kid, but uh, stuff like that would be included. Um, Defenders of the Realm, 
we have a conquest. All that good stuff would probably be included. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, going back to the games for a minute, because I know that's what your focus is on right now. Sure. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff about the people behind the games, the mm -hmm. actors, the development team, and so forth. I've seen a lot of stuff with the characters. Obviously, you're talking to me a lot about the lore, the mythology behind it, which is super fascinating. Mm -hmm. What about things like the special moves, the cheat codes, the, you know, A, B, A, C, A, B, B, all that stuff? Is that going to be in the book at all? And maybe not now, but long, somewhere down the road? Uh, it's possible. Um, I know that we have a tools of the trade section for each character where it, it highlights their, their moves. Like their, uh, like Scorpion has a spear. Um, like Sub Zero has this Cory Blade and his ability to create ice. And then, uh, there's all different ones that we kind of included on the other pages for, for the tools of the trade. We also include, like, an iconic fatality or two on there. Um, but it, we're kind of limited in what we can do with space for the prototypes. I would imagine that if we actually sat down with Prima or with WB and kind of ironed out the details for the book, I would imagine that the characters would get much more than just that small amount of space um, and one of the things that we kind of stressed to them was we want to see the characters through the ages and we want to see you know what are their moves what makes them so special like what makes that character that character um, we did talk to them about including like all the fatalities and stuff like that um, it would be really cool and we kind of stressed this too it was kind of an idea we just kind of tossed around is having like a, like a page where it has like all their fatalities for all systems through the years and that would be kind of cool to have, because then you can just reference it. Like, no matter what Mortal Kombat game you're playing, you can just go, oh, you know, I'll just check my, my book and be like, I'm playing Mortal Kombat on Sega Genesis. You know, what what version of Scorpion's Fatality can I do? Or um, playing Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, you know, uh, how do I how do I unlock Ermac? Um, so there's, there's different things that we're kind of touching and, and going about. Um, but that's something that we wanted to have eventually. Um, so including the blood code, maybe we could include that in like the credits in the front, just as like a uh, an Easter egg type thing, and see if some people notice it. But uh, right now it's kind of we're focusing on, you know, the two things, you know, the games, the lore, and then the people behind the lore. That's the main things that we're focusing on, and kind of creating a really a, a really cool aesthetic in terms of how things look, and you know, creating those renders and those images that people haven't really seen before. Yeah, definitely. One of the coolest things about the book that I've seen just from the prototype has to be the artwork mm -hmm. and just how you got a hold of some of that stuff. It's a, it's amazing looking. Um, what kind of research have you been doing to try and put, put all this stuff together? Um, there's a lot of stuff that Anthony I, and I have been doing in terms of, you know, we've reached out to other Mortal Kombat fans. That's like Total MK, obviously, you know, Luke. Um, Luke, yeah. In Australia? Yeah, he did a, did a video for us recently. He's a really cool dude. He's been helping us out. Um, we've talked uh, a lot to folks who actually wrote some of the older Mortal Kombat strategy guides. Uh, I'm not sure if you know James Fink. James M.K. Fink? Of course. Yeah. Who can forget? Yeah. James M.K. Yep. James helped us out tremendously with, with you know how to go about things and how to go about unofficial books and, and how to kind of not get in trouble uh, and, and how to get certain images and who to, who to talk to. Um, so a lot of that was kind of us researching them in terms of what we can do to not make people angry with us. Well, there are certain lines that you don't want to cross. <laughs> yeah. There are certain people you don't want to cross. Yeah. Um, but what kind of research did you do as far as, uh, for example, you have some really obscure thing in there that a lot of Mortal Kombat fans don't know, Reptile's real name. Mm -hmm. um, what, what kind of research have you been doing as far as that's concerned? Playing a lot of Mortal Kombat X. Um, you know, you... Those, those intros and stuff like that, like there would be a day where I would sit down and, and, and kind of just play through it just to get to the intros and then kind of like next match, next match, next match, and just replay the intros and kind of write things down. Um, and, and I worked with, with Anthony to kind of get some of that stuff done because I couldn't just sit there and do that for hours. Uh, so he kind of helped with some of that stuff. But, um, you know, there's YouTube videos out there in terms of like, oh, Reptile's real name. And, and um, you know, is Noob Cybot still out there? There's there's a lot of really cool stuff that we we did. Um, I looked at all my old guides, which is what those some of those tubs are. Um, I mean, it's two of them are better. Uh, but it, I looked at a lot of the old guides, and a lot of the old guides are really cool because they had like a mini biography. And like like one of them was I thought 
was really cool. And like, it was like Scorpion's favorite food, dead men don't eat. And then there's like a lot of really cool stuff that we had to, yeah, I remember this stuff. Like, like what's Shao Kahn's favorite song? Everybody wants to rule the world. Yeah. Yeah. There was some really obscure stuff, but it was really cool. And we kind of took some of that, um, from the, from the old guidebooks and kind of threw it in to what we were kind of piecing it together. We wanted to stay as far away from the wiki as possible because it's anybody can edit that and anybody can put whatever they want there. It's not exactly the most complete thing. Um, and, and not only that, you don't want to basically just take a wiki that's online and free and here you are putting it in a book and publishing it. That doesn't seem like the right way to go about it either. And yeah. You're trying not to, you're trying to stay in a safe space. Yeah. We're trying to make sure that it's something that MK fans want versus, uh, because they can just look at a wiki anytime they want and kind of edit it in, in any way they feel possible. This this book is something that's going to be a little different um, in terms of what it's going to offer the Mortal Kombat fan and the Mortal Kombat purist. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's what we're trying to do uh, mainly with, with in terms of our research. We're trying to give them something that's not copy and pasted from the internet, uh, which is why we have all these like really interesting images in there that people can't find online and like, whoa where'd you get that can you make me a banner or something like that right you don't want it to be the same old same old yeah and i showed you some of the uh the renders that we had um that make it look like the characters are kind of dancing those are going to go into the longer prototypes that we're sending out to youtubers uh, so they'll have co they'll have like a like a splash page of those renders so, I mean, that's that's something cool. I mean, we're trying to offer it as much as we can in terms of a, a really cool aesthetic. So, when Mortal Kombat fans reach into their wallets mm -hmm. and have to buy this book, yeah, how much is it going to cost them? Uh, from what we spoke to Prima and DK about, it's going to be ranging between twenty nine ninety nine and forty nine ninety nine, um, depending on the size of the book. Obviously, if it gets you know, you know full hardcover. It's going to be a book about that size. Um, it's, it's probably going to be closer to 50 bucks. But I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's 25 years of Mortal Kombat. Yeah. yeah. Worth every penny. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so are people going to be able to buy this in stores, do you think, or just online? Um, for right now, we, we aren't selling the prototypes. We're not selling anything yet. And that's just me covering my bases. Um, but down the road. Yeah, but down the road, we're hoping that it's something that's available in bookstores, comic book shops, game stores, online or Amazon, just like any other Mortal Kombat book would be, or encyclopedia book would be. Um, and we are kind of working with somebody right now, I think it's kamidogu.com, for an online version of the encyclopedia. Okay, yeah. Yeah. My buddy Chris, over, also over in Australia. Yep, he reached out to us and told us, um, and we, we're working everything out right now. Cool. Um, so that was, I was going to ask if there was an ebook version. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about something like for the Amazon Kindle or anything, any one of those e-reader devices like the Nook? We'd like to, uh, but it's kind of difficult because right now we're we're in a space where the idea is pitched to these book companies, and it's kind of like whether they want to do it or not. Um, and that's that's what we're waiting on. Gotcha. So the ball's kind of in there for it. Yeah. Finally, I got to ask that you're, you're calling this the Book of Remembrance. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with with that? specific title. So Anthony came up with that title. Um, and I thought it was pretty clever, uh, because he, he said that, you know, when God had a book, uh, you know, the gods had a book and they basically had this, this, uh, what, how do you say it? The book. And then it would tell him basically, it kind of would keep track of everyone mm -hmm. and it would be like how he kind of keeps tabs on people and he would kind of look into it. So you'd kind of be like, all right, you, you're, you're playing God, you're opening this book, and you're kind of these mortals. And he was like, yeah, we got to kind of play with the title a little bit, but it's it's something we're using for the prototype. Um, that and the Combatpedia, um, that was mine. But, you know, we're playing with it. That's, so the title's still a work in progress. It is a work in progress. Well, is there anything else you'd like to say about the book? Um, we hope people keep showing support for it. Uh, if they haven't signed the petition, sign the petition. Um, if they haven't checked out the prototypes, check out the prototypes. Um, we are going to get some out within the next month or so to YouTube users, and we're going to be getting more out into the community so that they can help kind of spread the word about this. Um, we're hoping to maybe get a couple copies into NetherRealm Studios. Um, not going to say how, uh, 
uh, but hopefully they get in there and hopefully they kind of make their way around to the, uh, the, the big man. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, if you haven't checked this out, check us out. Uh, we're just trying to make something for every Mortal Kombat fan, every fighting game fan, every, uh, you know, if you like, if you like cool art, you like Mortal Kombat, you like brutality, it's something to, to check out. Well, I gotta tell you, I'm very excited for you. Uh, I think everybody should do their part to help support this project. Uh, one thing that we can do is sign the petition. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and sign the petition right now. <laughs>